minority class with presidency over letter ordering parliament to cease and desist from attempting to transmit anti-gay bill to the president for his assent. We'll bring you more as NDC flag bearer John Mahama waits into debate as he says the presidency's posture smacks of disrespect to the clerk and parliament as an institution. So does Parliament consider that they have served the president with copies of the bill? And does the constitutional seven-day timeline already kick in? We have more. Tonight, the minority in Parliament is on a collision course with the presidency as they urge the clerk to Parliament, Cyril Oting Insia, to ignore a letter from the presidency warning him against any attempt to send the president copies of the controversial anti-gay Bill. Now, the clerk to parliament tried without success to transmit copies to the president for his signature. The minority already say the president's countenance is untenable and they cannot be injuncted. The latest is that the minority say the clerk to parliament should disregard the letter from the presidency. Haruna Idrisu is former minority leader and MP for Tamale South. Uh, as, as he spoke, uh, uh, MP for Ota for Vincent Ekwasefua also says the Tamale North MP is completely misreading the constitution. And as far as he's concerned, the president has done nothing wrong and he's right to stop the clerk from bringing him the bills. Now, uh, a lot more people have been reacting to this story and will bring you all the angles to this. But let's go to Parliament now and speak to our parliamentary affairs correspondent, Kweku Asante, who joins us with some details. Kweku, did the issue come up on the floor of Parliament? Well, that was the expectation. The expectation was that the former minority leader who raised this issue on the floor, and that is the indication he actually gave me, they actually did go inside okay. the chamber to try and have a conversation with the speakership, the first and second deputy speakers who were around today, to try and see if they would allow him to make that statement. We did not get any indication on that, and it was, as a result, he did a news conference outside of the chamber raising this matter. On the floor, it did not come up. But Harun Ayyusu says the president is acting unconstitutionally and the clerk to parliament must disregard that letter that was signed by Nana Bediyatu Asante, the executive secretary, to the president. Mm -hmm. Interesting then. So do we know if parliament of Ghana as a house considers that the bills have been officially sent to the president for assent? Well, as far as the, the, uh, the leadership of parliament is concerned, especially on the minority side, Parliament have actually made the attempt to serve this on the president. And in fact, the officials of the clerk to parliament did indeed try on Thursday to get these documents to parliament, uh, to the president. So the sponsors have been making a lot of noise, demanding that the clerk to parliament does this job. The second point, however, is that the speaker of parliament himself, Aban Bagbin, has been outside the country for a while. And we understand parliamentary leaders to be taking some decisions on this matter. And when the speaker of parliament arrives, since where he has been over the last week, he will offer some advice and some directives on what should happen. Harun Adiz is already saying that they will start counting the seven days that as 106 imposes on the president to either act or rise to parliament, signifying his intention not to sign that into law. And that has become the second point where the minority now insisting that the president is simply acting unconstitutionally. Mm. Well, well, quite an interesting development there. So, I mean, how many you are speaking? What about the, the majority side of the House? What have they also been saying about this development? Well, it was a difficult, uh, uh, difficult day today trying to get someone from the majority side to comment on this. In fact, the majority leadership will not say much of this because they want to keep their strategy close to their chest. But we managed to speak to Vincent Ekowasafoa, with a lawyer, deputy minister designate for works, uh, for local government ministry and MP for Old Tafo, who says that the minority, through her registry, are simply taking the matter out of context. And that they believe that the president, by virtue of the injunction applications that are currently pending before the Supreme Court, the president is right to seek to restrict 
the clerk to parliament from making any attempt, any further attempt, like he made last Thursday, to actually serve the president or send the authenticated copy of the controversial anti-gay bill to him. And that the president has not breached the constitution, the president is acting within the confines of the law. We are doing it tonight because we wanted to go, you know, Well, so, uh, but, I mean, interesting there. I mean, it's, it's quite interesting for all of us to anticipate what the House will take this. Now that the House looks a bit divided because one person from the minority is, is, is saying that, well, the president has erred. Another, another person from the majority also says, well, the president has done nothing wrong. Um, let's listen to all these people, starting with the former minority leader, Haruna Idrisu. He says the Attorney General have informed the office 18 May 2024 that the President has been duly served with both applications and has advised the President not to take any step in relation to the bill. It is not for the Attorney General to advise the President not to take any step. The Constitution dictates what the President should do, assent to it or refer it back to Parliament with an explanation or to the Council of State. It didn't say he should refer to the Attorney General. Yes, Article 88 gives him a mandate. The Constitution is very clear. So what we want to do, and it's part of the matters I raised before Parliament, we must now know when did Parliament remit the bill to the President, and we will count seven days. If seven days have lapsed and he has not assented to, and he has not written back to Parliament, nor to the Council of State, will hold the president responsible for a constitutional breach. And he should know the legal, lawful, constitutional consequences of his action. So this is why we've called to address you that it's a matter of grave constitutional threat to our democracy and to the proper and effective functioning of the constitutional structures created by the ninth, framers of the 1992 constitution, which envisioned separation of powers not the predominance of any organ over the other, not the predominance of Nana Dudankwa Akufuado over every other organ of state. He is wrong in law, he is wrong constitutionally. The clerk should ignore this communication. I'm happy. So that's uh, former minority leader um, Haruna Idrisu there. Now, once this has come onto the domain, it, it then opens up for other people to join the debate. And of course, the NDC flag bearer, John Mahama, has waded into this debate. He says the president's secretary has no such authority to issue such a letter, insisting the parliament is constitutionally independent. <laughs> Christosum engine tum, Islam engine tum, Abosum form po engine tum, and a idea a yechi wadia, Emma Yan Crawford. Parliament, Nan saying, Oma ye crater, ah, Omo ye huejuma, ah, Omo de call president or no assign. Na president, I can on sign if you say, Obi de assem no ako court, and tea or no veteran etti in your court, Becca answer. And so I no pay me sorry here, me who let her be a free president, secretary for echo parliament. A man warning says, Sakrata no more on farm ma uh, president office and po. Na ubi obey a lawyer or ubi or yellow lawyer be a becatcher say a president secretary in need to me say obey to me a trust a letter. If you say parliament a uh, constitution. And I shame Rama almost say, Omu ye, sir, a new year, Omu Fanko president. And to me, I can say, Ma on ye, Juma, say, on farm realm po. Wait, me, I can say, Obi say, my president and sign. And to me, train eight years Supreme Court. But don't mean throw letter and mark like say, Mom, far and my president as a Jubilee household. And to me, no, no. Now, she has sent you a troll letter, no poor. And you boo a troll letter, no BBB to say, Oh, to me be a chair in parliament. Now, son, your man, oh, um, say, and ma, a mambo no, and co ye. And see, you didn't say, yeah, and this idea, you didn't rustle. Now, a better senior, and your ma, back where I could see. 
or the former president says the uh, president secretary had no authority to write such a letter and he says the, the letter that the, the secretary wrote is not even respectful if you look at the tone of the letter and and he asked that such things uh, do not help in the governance uh, that we are all practicing in this country and he ended by saying that well people know that the ndc does not do uh, the, that that kind of thing and therefore the, when they come uh, I mean, they cannot be doing the things that we're witnessing now. Well, let's speak to one of the co-sponsors of the anti-gay bill, Roxy Nelson Dafiabakpo, who has joined us on the telephone lines now. G grateful to you, sir, for joining us. Why does the minority say the presidency has erred? Yes, uh, first of all, if you read Article 106, uh, 106.8 clearly, uh, the, the president has no has no liberties to exercise in respect of this matter because there are time constraints on how to exercise his functions under 1068. The constitution says when the bill is remitted to his office for assent, within seven weeks uh, within seven days he must inform parliament as to whether he's remitted it to the office of the uh, that's the uh, Council of State mm. for advice. Now, if it's not remitting it to Council of State for advice, then he must communicate to Parliament within 14 days whether he's proceeding to give assent or he's exercising a veto. If he's going to exercise a veto, then he must indicate to Parliament his concerns and appealing that exercise of veto provision by provision, and propose amendments and justify it. And in that justification, he also indicated to Parliament that he's remitted it to Council of State for advice. Council of State has 30 days to also respond to the President. If he's exercising the veto directly vis-à-vis -vis the Parliament, then he will have to remit the bill back to Parliament within that 14 days with proposed amendments and Parliament will have to necessarily consider it and factor it into the bill. When that is done, Parliament will then proceed to approve of it by two-thirds majority. After that two-thirds majority, if it succeeds, then the President then is remitted back to the President where he has within 30 days to exercise, exercise the assent or assign assent to it. So... So this provision does not give the president any liberties to delay a bill. There's no such mandate that you can exercise a discretion and, and delay the bill as long as a certain court matter prevails. No. Well, well, but but, but the, the, the presidency is, is, is referring to some two cases pending, um, you know, for an order yeah. of interlocutory injunction, both yeah. filed... Uh, and they give a date in the Supreme Court. Now, yes. isn't the presidency right to say that because of those two cases, or well, I don't want to, uh, you know, tamper with what's happening in, in the court, and therefore let's allow the process to end, and I'll, I'll do justice when the case ends. If you read, if you really read the Supreme Court decision in the dismissal of the electoral commissioner, shall also say, the, 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 no court can injunct a president from performing his functions other than the Constitution. That is why there's, there's a presumption of regularity of the performance of functions of the president until a court otherwise removes him. So, for instance, when a president is elected into office and sworn and takes the oath of office, and another who contested is agreed and goes to the Supreme Court, what the president does until the court pronounces on the validity or otherwise of the election of that president is not declared a nullity. So you cannot say that because the election of the president is challenged, you can bring an election to injure the president not to perform the functions that turn out upon the office of the president. Okay. So, so it, it can only be going forward. The, mm. the, the decision of the court can only be going forward. It, but it cannot affect any decision that it takes whilst occupying that office. That is why if anybody, and in, in any case, let's make this point clear, that you can only challenge an act of parliament. A bill, a bill is not an act of parliament properly so called. So it is only when a bill is declared unconstitutional that its effect can be 
Mm, mm, mm. Okay. okay. Let, let, let's bring in Associate Professor School of Law, University of Ghana, Professor Kwajo Apieje Etia. Prof, I'm grateful to you for joining us here. There appears to be a constitutional crisis here. Looking at what's happening, the Clerk of Parliament has a duty to honor the presidency, says it should not transmit educators. Now, now does that constitution uh, uh, speak on what must be done? Our 1992 constitution, does it speak on exactly what must be done? Thank you for having me. I think the, um, this shouldn't constitute a constitutional crisis. The matter has gone into the arena of where we have to determine what an injunction is or an um, application for an injunction means. They say this is an interlocutory injunction, and it means that it's an interim injunction that is being sought for. And, of course, there are schools, two schools of thought as to whether if an injunction is placed before the case for injunction is brought before the court, it should the injunction should immediately take effect. In other words, the person who is being injuncted should not do anything until the court hears the case. Or whether the person is not prevented from doing anything as prescribed in the injunction application um, until the court hears the case. I remember... Um, I think the last year or so, when the um, E-Levy bill came about, the, there was an attempt to injunct the president from um, assenting to that bill. But the president rather went ahead and um, um, assented to the bill for it mm -hmm. to come into effect. Mm -hmm. And I recall very well, NDC is one of those that were not in favor of the position taken by the president. So, the, so at that point, the NDC view is that when an injunction is issued, it should immediately hold the hands of the one against whom it is issued, in this, in this case the president, until uh, the case is determined, determined by the courts. So we all um, were not in favor of the decision taken by the president and thought that he didn't act according to um, the requirements of the Constitution. Mm. So uh, uh, if the, um, the president at this time decides not no. to um, um, sign the bill or assent to the bill, but to wait for the court to pronounce on it, okay. I think oh, the president no. is doing the right oh, thing. Tally, tally. So tally. all that oh, we have yeah. to do is to wait for the president for the court yeah. to make a determination yeah. of the injunction. Tally, then we'll know the, the way forward. I think that is what well, the president I was just is trying to say. Of the As for the letter signed by the executive secretary, I don't think it carries any weight because it, it, it is it, not it, the president himself and it, saying it, that the law um, and it, it is uh, okay. uh, and not I, going to accept the the the, the, the uh, bill for, okay. for him to accept. But, 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 so but, but, that is what the position of the law is. Mm. You had uh, Honorable Dafia Makbode uh, cite the Supreme Court judgment in which the president cannot be injuncted from performing its, uh, you know, his constitutionally mandated role. So, and then of course, you also brought, brought in the E Levy bill when it brought when when it was passed by Parliament, and someone went to court. The president still signed it. So, what is happening here? Is the president and the minority, all, all of them, choosing and picking what, and of course, uh, which of the areas they will argue for and against at which point in time? Well, you can see that um, there's choosing and picking, and that is where. Politics come into the picture, but I, I, I look at it from the um, purely legal angle and say that the president probably wants to do the right thing this time. That is why he's saying that um, I'm, I'm, my hands are held until there's a determination by the court because that is the view that generally it should be. Because if that person is who is um, being injuncted through that uh, application says that. Pro Prof, I, 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 I don't know if you are close to a radio set. If you are, kindly lower the volume or turn it down for us. No, actually. You are not interested. No. Okay. All right, let's hear you, sir. Is it better? Uh, yes, we'll manage. Okay. So so I'm saying that um, if a person is injuncted, an application has not been heard, a person who is law-abiding will actually not take any action until the case is heard so that it will not be as if um, he or she will be taking advantage of 
the gap between the the the, um, the time the case is filed until the case is heard, so that he would yeah. do anything quickly to make the the nullity uh, the grant of the injunction a nullity. So I think the proper position is for the president not to act okay. until a determination is made by the courts. Okay. In which case, you wouldn't have any choice than to comply. Thank you for, for that education. Now, now um, um, uh, Mr. Damian Mokpo, you, you listened to Professor Etia Etia there. Uh, do you side with him that, well, in the e levy bill, you wanted the president to not to assent to the bill? And that's the same thing he's doing today, that because there's a case in court, he says, I'll wait for the process to end before I take an action. Isn't he right there? Now, now, yes, I may be right, but I am asking, is it prudent for the president has to be tied in performing his constitutional duties? Because I cited the case law, I cited the, the doctrine of law, which is presumption of regularity of actions, or actions performed until the court of law otherwise they pronounce it. But let me let me let me ask this, and Prof, Prof I, I, I mean my great professor, my lecturer, I mean he taught me law, and so I have high, very high regard for him. He taught me at the postgraduate level as well. But let me ask this: If tomorrow I sue the chief justice in respect of the performance of his administrative function and and all that for some matter, so I am agreed. Can I bring an injunction against the chief justice and proceed to say that, based on that, she shouldn't perform all her constitutional functions, including a panel of court? Can you imagine the, the absurdity well, 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 and the chaos that that would generate? Well, 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 but, but again, uh, when the e-levy issue came up and you didn't want the president to assent to the bill, Weren't you aware of the, the that provision that the president should not be stopped from from performing his constitutionally mandated responsibility? Let me let me give you a lot of instances. For instance, when the president unconstitutionally removed the Auditor General Domelevo from office, he was he was injuncted, he was told to 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 restore the man until the Supreme Court pronounces otherwise he refused. Domelevo never went back to office. The Supreme Court went ahead to pronounce that his actions were unconstitutional. There's been no con there's been no consequences. So I am saying that the the president is rather being very convenient with this decision because it favors the position he has taken without even seeing the risk, without even engaging having engaged the people. Mm. He uh, he alludes to the fact that a, a certain risk has been found or supposed to have been found. So I am saying that. The president, if he decides to stay his own hands in this matter, what is parliament supposed to do within the meaning of Article 1068? Okay. Is All parliament right. also supposed to stay at camp, mm. on, on, at camp and wait until the, the, the judiciary makes a pronouncement on the matter? Okay. It, would be, it would have been an inclusion okay. on the powers of parliament by the judiciary and the executive. Well, well, and that is not the intent of the framers of the constitution. Okay. L let me bring in your colleague MP for Old Tafel, Vincent Ekoisefua. Uh, Vincent, grateful for, for joining us here. You disagree with the minority. Why? Well, let me say a very good evening to you and to your cherished listeners. Uh, yes, indeed, I disagree with them. Um, the point of law that they are adducing to have been the basis for their disagreement with respect to the president's communication to parliament um, is wrongful. Why do I say that? Um, it is settled law, in my estimation, that as soon as an attempt is made to injunct a person, uh, it is supposed to be seen as an injunction, put differently. If a motion or an application is made to a court to inject someone from doing something, it is supposed to be seen as synonymous to the injunction itself. Where a lawyer or a person who is supposed to be seen as an officer of the court so pushes someone or so advises someone to do something that will prejudice or 
predetermine the matter in question. That officer of the court, per the Legal Profession Act, is seen to be in contempt of court. And so, in my estimation, on a court, based on the authority of Aiti versus Agbofu II, the Supreme Court was the opinion that an application that is made, which comes to notice or which is in known to the respondent, that respondent cannot be seen to be doing anything that is likely to prejudice the matter in court. So if we do that, what is going to happen is that we are rather jeopardizing the administration or delivery of justice. There are other cases in um, cases that have been settled by um, Court of Appeal and High, high Court, um, especially with respect to Republic versus Mofat and other ex parte allocates. And so any argument that is contrary to what the Supreme Court and um, other courts or superior courts have been saying, for me, becomes very difficult for me to understand. And so I disagree with the minority position that an attempt, it is an attempt is not an injunction in, by itself. And for that matter, such an attempt or an application in court, um, in the case of Richard Kerr and Dr. Amanda, cannot be an injunction in itself. So the president is mandated to, as it were, receive the communication from parliament. And so I disagree with what the minority is saying. All right. Uh, but, but thank you so much for joining. Let me bring in Dafia Makpo here and uh, find out from you, what will be the next line of action by the minority? Hello, Honorable Dafia Makpo. Do, do we still have... Uh, oh, so, so, uh, uh huh. Yes. Vincent, Vincent Asifua, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a lawyer in the common law jurisdiction, and he knows that decisions of the same court can conflict. I cited the authority of the same court in the dismissal of the EC chairperson. The same court said that in the performance of the constitutional functions of the president, he cannot be injuncted. There's no superior authority to that. So, uh, so, 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 so I'm, I'm, I'm asking for so, the next so line of action, the minority. Uh, uh, okay. uh -huh. in, in discussing, in discussing doctrines and appealing grant or refusal of, of injunctions, you must place in context what is the issue at stake. We speak of the performance of constitutional mandate, so he can make a very convenient argument, and that is fine. But I'm saying that. The Supreme Court itself says that in the performance of the constitutional functions of state, the person who is, who is endowed with the powers cannot be injuncted because there's a presumption of regularity of rule unless the Supreme Court says that you don't mm. have the power to exercise. Okay, so what's the, so next, uh -huh. so the next line of action? General to the specifics, we, 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 we are ready to deal with the issues as they come. Our strategy has been changed as a minority who we'll raise the issues who carry the society along. This is a bill that Parliament, in the performance of its, its functions, the, the Constitution says Parliament is independent in the performance of its functions. No other organ of state can intrude into how Parliament performs its functions. And again, the office of the President is, is not anybody's sole proprietorship. A, a, a communication from, from Parliament will have to be accepted by the President whatever consequences there are. So you can't say that because of a certain court action, even communication from the presidency, uh, from, from parliament cannot be received by the presidency. Is that the nature of the injunction? In any case, doesn't the president communicate with parliament so that tomorrow another, another sees parliament and, and we are saying that mm. the presidency cannot even communicate with parliament because there's there's a certain application for injunction. Okay. Can this country work like that? All right. Thank you for, for joining us, uh, Honorable Dafia Mkwade, Echo Vincent Asifwa, um, and then uh, Professor uh, Kwajo Apieja. I'm grateful to you for joining us. This has been Top Story. Uh, my name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Up next is MFA Apel with uh, the uh, news.